Hi there, I'm Eli Sipka, and this is the Petros Review. Now in this episode, we this is actually the first of a two-part episode, where I reviewed both versions of a certain 1978 film called The Astral Factor. Now, I will save the majority of the film's critical analysis for the when I review the uncut version, which will be in the next review, but for this part one, I'm going to be talking about the re-edit, Invisible Strangler. Now, this version was, or the original version, Astro Factor, was released in cinemas for about a week, starting from the 1st of February 1978. After its week of the uh, of, uh, theater screening, it was pulled, then put on, on the shelves, and wasn't released, I mean, it was, it was, it was released onto VHS on the 1st of November 1984. But before that, before that release, they actually, all, certain scenes were reshot. Which is interesting. So again, that th this this particular version of the movie was released in on the first of November, nineteen eighty four, on VHS. This DVD actually comes from the mid two thousands. It's a dirt cheap DVD. Sorry about that. Now the Astro Factor was, and by the way, this reality is called Invisible Strangler. Now the Astro Factor was uh, directed by Arthur C. Pierce, who also wrote the screenplay and the story and which was also worked on by Earl Lyon who was also the producer but for the re-edit when it came time to uh, shoot the new footage and stuff it was handled by John Flory who was a TV director and Gene Fowler Jr. Now the cast includes Robert Foxworth, Stephanie Powers, you know that chick from the Hot Hot TV series I used to watch it when I was a kid, Mark Slade, Elkie Sommer who was a uh, washed up uh, European actress Frank Ashmore, who plays the killer here, Renata Vazel, and Percy Rodriguez. Now, both versions of this film are squarely in the public domain, meaning you can find them in various public domain operator sources. That being said, this particular version is far more common in Australia than the original Astro Factor was, because Palos Entertainment was fond of putting this one on various of its cheap multipacks, and also on singles as well, as you can see here. The reason I'm wearing a glove is because I was actually working on the model of a tank. Actually, I'll get back to finishing this one after this review. Now, actually, I saw the Astro Factor, the Anka version first, because uh, it was Palace Entertainment released it on a uh, on the Sci-Fi Classics uh, box set that I reviewed like last year in the Public Domain uh, Madness series, and uh, I reviewed quite a few films on that set. And uh, that was the only like th that was the only time Palace actually release that particular version of the film but uh, the only the only single release I've seen of the uncut version Astro Factor was from an Australian uh, sorry was from a, a British a European DVD that was actually released in Australia for some reason now this version this is actually a very cheap DVD I was like really so I mean normally like for about two bucks you could see it for about it's an expensive five bucks back in the day, and uh, this is like the relic mid, mid, like around 2005. This now, I am actually planning on release, uh, I'm actually going to upload both versions of the film on YouTube eventually. In fact, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and uh, upload this version first, which, which I'll do it after, after this video, and then I'll, I'll do a post about it. And then um, the Astro Factor, I'll do the review of that, and then I'll upload that uh, thing, so, that version eventually. And by the way, if the sunlight's hitting the camera, that's because of the. Wait a second. Right. Sorry about that. Now for the synopsis. While serving a life sentence in Los Angeles, I mean, a Los Angeles mental institution, for killing his domineering narcissist of a washed up actress mother, Roger Sands has spent his free time developing his latent psychic powers, to the point he can now turn himself invisible. He uses this awesome power to walk out of his prison cell and begin his mission of revenge against the five former friends of his late mother, who testified against him as murder trial. As Sands begins working his way through his kill list by uh, strangling his victims, the film is called The Invisible Strangler. I mean, if the guy went around to invisible with a gun or a knife or a bomb, 
that would kind of defeat the purpose of calling invisible strangler. And to be honest, it's easier to strangle people while invisible than carrying weapons. Now, while he's doing that, LAPD Lieutenant uh, Chuck Barrett is tasked with bringing Sans down, but Sans' psychic cloaking ability gives him a massive advantage that leaves the LAPD almost powerless to stop them. Now, this was a 1984 rear to direct video release, although technically not a true direct video title, given that the original version did see a very brief theatrical release of a week of the 1978 schlocker The Astral Factor. Both versions cover pretty much the same story, and I've already explained that in the synopsis. And uh, while I consider the original version to be undoubtedly the superior version of the two, both ver versions are, in the word, terrible. Now, I'll leave my critical analysis of the original version for the next review, because it'll be pointless to cover it here, in this episode. But for this 1984 release, Invisible Strangler, I'll say the following. This is a duller than the box of grey crowns made from recycled shit, cheesily edited third-rate police procedural masquerading as a science fiction horror movie. This is also a prime example of the utter depths that the movie studios of the day were prepared to go down to to explore in order to release just about anything they could find in order to make a quick buck. The concept is decent enough to handle correctly, but neither the original Astral Factor version nor this Invisible Strangle re edit come even close to managing that one well enough. The so at least an idea, but just a bad execution. The film might have had a chance to meet some entertainment requirement for its original time frame in the late 19th century cinema, but by the time this 1984 re was released onto VHS, the story was out there. It's basically like a 1970s uh, cop telepic, done with a sci fi element to it. Now, I will get to the crux of this review, which is pretty much by listening to the differences that you'll get when you watch this version over the original one first. The intro scene that establishes the story arc of the murderer runs a few minutes longer here than it did in the original version, going so far as to include flashback scenes of Roger Sands with his mother, which were not in the original version, have been shot specifically for the re-edit, and has been completely reshot, with only Frank Ashmore returning to play his character Roger Sands. Although the length of time between drinks here means that his hair is lighter in colour, and he looks a fair bit older too. Despite this, the version, this version runs 10 minutes shorter than the original cut did. And by the way, the prints of the original version have uh, grease pencil marks on them. It's a work print, obviously, because uh, uh, unless somebody can find like a pristine version, uncut version, yeah, the cuts you're going to find are pretty much going to be having marks on them. Now, the psychic cloaking ability is demonstrated here as a simple fade-in, fade-out optical trick, which is a rudimentary effect from a uh, visual effects perspective, but also lacks the imaginative Star Trek style anime effect that was used for the original version. For the original, if Roger Sands uh, turns invisible, it's like he's being a Star Trek beamed. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> but also, I should point out that, just, uh, I just not remembered now, Roger Sands, when he turns invisible in the original version, he keeps his clothes on. Here, he turns invisible. Uh, I mean, he, he takes his clothes off before, before he cloaks. Now, with the exception of his last word, Mama, Roger Sands, in this version, does not speak at all. In the original version, he was quite a chatterbox, particularly when he ices his victims. N now, the scene where Chuck the Hero Lieutenant is shaving while his ditzy airhead of a wife, played by Stephanie Powers, is in bed has been cut by a fair bit of footage. All the nude shots of Stephanie Powers' ass and bare back have been removed, leaving only a brief bit of a bare back as she puts on a shirt and gets up from bed. The most you'll see is a brief side shot of Powers' left boob. I should point out also, if you freeze frame the film right when she rises up from bed after putting a shirt on, you can see the bottom of her butt crack. <laughs> uh, you'll see a little bit more of her in the original version, but the, the nudity is completely negligible. So there won't be any age restrictions. Uh, and by the way, there was also an interesting the killer, the, the, the Roger Sands actually deals with a, uh, he visits his uh, mother's uh, grave in the cemetery. And he kills a cop uh, security guard there, too, which was actually removed from the re-edit. Now, this version also has had its musical score completely redone. And it's also very obvious in the dance rehearsal scene where Roger strings the dance victim on stage. In the original version, the music is very guttural and creepy, whereas here it sounds more like a 1970s attempt at Euro trance. The climax, where Roger, quite literally in fact, goes off to meet his maker, is different from the original version. Here he fades back into view, says his only word, and then dies. Whereas in the original version, his voice teleported into space and atomizes. And I'm pretty much going to end the, this review of Invisible Strangler. 
I will cover the film more comprehensively in the next review episode. It's pointless to pretty much the same, say the same thing in both episodes, so I'll keep the proper review for the next for the original version. I mean, this was more like to just run down the reed. I will say a couple more things though. This version gets a dread D minus one out of ten. Absolutely terrible film. Then again, that's the same I would say for the original. But the original is the better version. Now for the DVD. This reed has been in the public domain for ages, including uh, which is also the same for the uncut version. So that's why I'm going to kind of upload them without any copyright strikes. <laughs> Meaning it can be found on various cheap multi-packs and single disc releases. Now while I've owned at least two releases of this film, they're both for Palace Entertainment. I've already talked about the DVDs of this film. Now while I've owned, now the, this particular disc, this is like from the mid-2000s, the picture quality is reasonable for the dirt cheap nature of the print. Looks, it looks like a good quality VHS rip, but there's no supplemental reels on the disc, which should be taken into consideration. It's got a 133 aspect ratio, mono sound, no subtitles, nothing else, and you know, it's about a, it's a cheap disc. Of course, it's now out of print, but this one, but if, if you know where to look, you can pretty much find copies of this. It's also, it was also on one of Pales' uh, uh, one of the action themed uh, multi packs. So, you, if you go through a second hand stores in Australia, you'll find this one more easily than you'll find the original version. Anyway. But if you have any trouble finding both versions, don't worry. I'm going to upload both versions of it on YouTube eventually, so keep an eye out for that. I'll update you in the post eventually when that comes. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, just hit me on the comment section, I'll be happy to answer. Hope you guys are staying safe, take it easy, and see ya. Oh, and by the way, watch out for any invisible killers. <laughs> Yeah.